Winter in these North Carolina towns is magical. <laughs> Okay. If you're looking for a new place to call home, a place to buy a vacation home, or just some place to take a lovely vacation, these magical winter towns should be on your bucket list. Blowing Rock has just over 13,000 residents and is famous for, well, the Blowing Rock. We are at the Blowing Rock. Not Blowing Rock, the Blowing Rock. I think it's gonna blow on us. Today, Blowing Rock is known best as one of the coolest downtown shopping experiences in the high country. Oh, I forgot that is. That's the good smelling one. If you love a traditional downtown, you will absolutely love Blowing Rock. The town sponsored concerts happen throughout the year. There's an annual trout derby in April, a winter fest, six art shows each year, followed by a concert in the park and the Blowing Rock Charity Horse Show. The town also has its own art history museum. The Chitola Sporting Reserve in town is a private club where you can practice your fly fishing, sporting plays and archery skills. If you stay at the Chitola Resort, you can get access to the club even without membership. Locals love the Blowing Rock Market. Looking at it from the outside, you might think that the market was an old off-brand convenience store, but you'd be wrong. It's almost the center of downtown life in Blowing Rock. If you're thinking about moving to Blowing Rock, strike up a conversation with Dave, the owner. They're here more, less to shop, and more is to have a place where they can have a conversation, have, a conversation. have food let him know that I sent you. He can tell you everything you need to know about Blowing Rock. No restaurant in town has a Google rating of less than 4.3 stars. Full disclosure and a warning, during the winter months, not all of these places are open. During the week, not all of them are open. You wanna know how I know? Normally they're open, but apparently they closed special just for us. Like all the small towns in this video, winter sports at Beach Mountain, Sugar Mountain, Appalachian Mountain, and Hawk's Nest are just a short drive away. If you come to Blowing Rock on vacation, you'll probably want to visit Tweetsie Railroad and Mystery Hill just north of town, and of course, the Blowing Rock. The admission price will get you some pretty remarkable views, but a local told us you can probably find even better views for free. But of course, you can't get a Blowing Rock t-shirt or a coffee mug when you stop off the side of the road to see the view. So there's that. In Blowing Rock, the median home price is $577,000, and that's increased 32% in the last year. For $750,000, you can get this beautiful home complete with a guest cottage and stunning views. Just north of Blowing Rock is Boone, named for Daniel Boone. Boone has about 19,000 people. However, what's unique about Boone is that it's home to Appalachian State University, whose population is 18,000, which pretty much means that the population doubles whenever the students are in session. Now, I don't live in Boone, but I've visited there different times of the year, and from what I can tell, because summertime is such a popular time to visit the mountains, you really don't see a huge difference in population when students are away during break. We used to live in Charlottesville, Virginia, when Timothy was in grad school at UVA and there was a huge difference in traffic during school session and it could really be frustrating for year-round locals. Boone doesn't have as many ups and downs because when students leave in the summer all the Florida residents who own vacation homes come into town to escape the Florida heat and so it pretty much stays busy year-round. The one time it does tend to get more congested than normal is during leaf season which happens during the month of October usually peaking during the middle of the month. Boone is known for being a quaint friendly college town in the mountains. People love to visit Boone for all the outdoor activities, snow skiing, leaf watching, golfing, hiking, tubing, all are popular activities in Boone. Boone's downtown area right next to the university caters to both the student and visitor population. There are plenty of local restaurants and plenty of places to pick up North Carolina souvenirs or App State merch. Horn in the West is a famous annual event that happens in Boone. This living history drama tells the story of Daniel Boone and the Blue Ridge Mountain Settlers. It's kind of like Boone's own Rocky Horror Picture Show, just with period costumes. I don't know if that's really true, but if I lived in a place where they had the same play running all summer long, year after year, you better believe I'd be crashing it in costume. The show only runs from June through August, and it's beginning its 70th year of continuous production, with the exception of 2020, where the show did not go on due to COVID. If you're in Boone, and you're eating, which you probably will be, you're gonna to wanna to try a few places that are quintessential Boone. Those are the Daniel Boone Inn, of course, the Coyote Kitchen, the Cardinal, and Wildcraft Eatery. In Boone, the median home price is right around $400,000, and that has increased 20, or excuse me, 33% over the last year. For around the median price, you can get an adorable three bedroom, two and a half bath Cape Cod home like this one on a full unfinished basement. But when you're in the mountains, you want a view, so you might really prefer this beauty for 
only two and a half million dollars, so affordable compared to other places with these kinds of views. Banner Elk has just under 1,200 residents, and the median age of residents in Banner Elk is only 21 years old, likely due to the fact that Lee's McRae College sits right in the middle of the small downtown. For most people, Banner Elk is a destination town. In 400 feet, turn right onto Main Street East. You've arrived. The town itself is really a crossroads, sitting about halfway between Beach and Sugar Mountains, the two largest ski resorts in the South. Skiing, snowboarding, and tubing might be the staples of wintertime fun, but there is also wintertime zipline tours, ice skating, and an alpine coaster. Your cart is hauled to the top of the mountain, and then gravity takes over, and you careen through the woods to the bottom. I did not do this. Once the weather gets warmer, traditional mountain sports take over. Hiking, biking, whitewater rafting, fishing, and rock climbing are all on tap. It might be a small town, but you wouldn't know it from looking at their events calendar. July brings the Grandfather Mountain Highland Games to nearby Linville. If you want to get your Scottish on, you've got to visit to see the traditional games, the bagpipes, the dancing, and the Celtic rock band. And don't forget your kilt. Here you go, put this on. But I'm not even Scottish! Just put it on. That's not even a kilt! Put it on. July through August sees local and regional bands performing each Thursday at the Town Amphitheater. The summer holiday weekends bring Art on the Green to Banner Elk, where you can buy all kinds of cool handmade arts and crafts. Oktoberfest is the second weekend in October at Sugar Mountain. And on the third weekend in October, the world-famous and very weird Wooly Worm Festival has been going on since 1978. Now, this one might need some explaining. Like any good festival, there are lots and lots of craft vendors, food, music, rides, all that kind of stuff, but the highlight of this festival is the Wooly Worm Race. The Wooly Worm is the Wooly Bear Caterpillar. These cute little guys have 13 bands of color and they represent the 13 weeks of winter. A brown band means a mild week, a black band means a snowy week, but each caterpillar has different sequences of colors, so they race the caterpillars and the winner's forecast is accepted for the upcoming season. like a southern groundhog's day with just a little more excitement and competition thrown in. Banner Elk is known as the culinary hotspot of the high country. Your one-stop shop for breakfast, lunch, and dinner is the Banner Elk Cafe and Lodge. They've got two restaurants, an espresso bar, a bakery, a smoothie bar, and an ice cream shop. The variety of restaurants in Banner Elk is really impressive for a town this size. They've got Cajun, Vietnamese, Japanese, tapas and Caribbean, Mexican, Italian, delis, farm to table, steak and seafood, and a couple of fine dining establishments, but there is no McDonald's. We were invited to tour a gorgeous home getting ready to hit the market in Banner Elk, but before I show it to you, I have to tell you something. If you think that YouTube should show my videos to people and not just videos from that blonde guy who does content about Raleigh, drop me a comment or like this video or subscribe or do all three. I'm not picky. They all tell the YouTube algorithm that my video is good and that other people should get to see it because it's good, right? In Banner Elk, the median price is $396,000. It has seen a 29% change over the last year. Check out this amazing cabin. It's totally pet friendly. The price will probably be above that median, but worth every penny. What's the material? What countertop material? feel. So it's light and bright and big and yet it also feels cozy. How hard is that to capture? Okay, so downstairs we've got log cabin but light and bright. Upstairs we've got cozy cottage vibe. Again, it's so bright. It's so bright. Beach Mountain, like many of these mountain towns, has very few permanent residents. Most properties in this area are either second homes or vacation rentals. Think of it like a bunch of rental communities on the sides of a mountain surrounding the Beach Mountain Resort. Having said that, the permanent population of Beach Mountain is 614 people, and no, this is not the smallest town on the list. We've got one more to go. The advantages to living in Beach Mountain is that you don't have to drive up this road to get to the ski lift.
the summer, you can mountain bike or play disc golf at the resort. Beach Mountain Brewing Company is right in the middle of the resort, but you don't have to have lift tickets to visit. It's open for everyone. If you're not into skiing, Beach Mountain is also home to the Land of Oz theme park. Land of Oz used to be open year round, but now it's open only on select weekends during the season, usually in September. So check their website before you go for a visit. There's also great hiking in Beach Mountain and the Buckeye Lake Recreation Center is a great place to hike if you're looking for waterfalls. Some fun events that happen in Beach Mountain every year are the roasting of the hog on Independence Weekend and the Mile High Kite Festival every Labor Day. And you don't want to miss the fireworks on the mountain every year at Beach Mountain Resort. The Alpine Restaurant and Bar is a popular chalet style restaurant serving typical American food. It's super cozy with a huge double fireplace and mountain views. The median home price in Beach Mountain is $385,000. Beach Mountain is one of the places where you can find condos that are relatively inexpensive, so the prices really are all over the place. But if you want a nice family home, you can get something like this four bedroom, four bath home with nice views for around $700,000. Now, I have Little Switzerland on my list of mountain towns because it's really popular among the locals, but this is really not a town. It's more like an area because wait until you hear this, the population is 28. Like as in 28 people, not 2,800, not 28,000, but 28. Anyway, Little Switzerland is known for its old world European architecture. I mean, there are only like five buildings, but they're still pretty cool. The main attractions are the Little Switzerland Inn, the Little Switzerland Cafe, and the Little Switzerland Tunnel. Say that five times fast. The other thing Little Switzerland is known for is Highway 226A, also known as the Diamondback. This is also something I have not done and I don't intend to. The Diamondback is described as climbing quickly in elevation with sensational amount of curves. It's not a great road for truckers, but it's apparently a really cool road for bikers. Little Switzerland is known as the jewel of the Blue Ridge Parkway. So if you're the type of person that loves to go for long scenic drives, you would love Little Switzerland. It also has a great little bookshop. I am sensing a introvert convention happening sometime soon in Little Switzerland. I will be there. The Switzerland Cafe specializes in homemade sandwiches, soups, and quiche. The Chalet Restaurant and the Foul Play Pub are both located at the Switzerland Inn. Little Switzerland is actually a little incorporated community within the town of Marion, so there really isn't a ton for sale here. But even at that, Zillow has the median price at $183,000. The reason for that is that most of what is for sale is raw land, so this might be a good place to build your dream home. But if you want a home already built, I just love this cabin for $599,000 because it's designed around these lovely views. Just look at those big bright windows all around. If you like this video, you might also like this one about Christmas towns, even though it's not Christmas right now. The post-COVID world has made holiday cheer a permanently acceptable resident. Go watch it.